Okay, thank you very much, Mina Hocam. Uh, good evening, dear students, faculty members, and valuable guests. This evening, uh, we are hosting Dr. Ipek Akpınar in the second event of this semester's Archi Design Talks. It's my great pleasure to moderate this event as Ipek Hoca, whom I know since my ITU days has been an inspiration for me and many of my friends and colleagues as a researcher, scholar, instructor and advisor. Uh, I would like to briefly introduce Ipek Akpınar first. Ipek Akpınar is a full time professor at Izmir Institute of Technology. She is conducting architectural and urban design studios, lecturing master and PhD courses on the relations of architecture with the urban, political and cultural context, as well as social actors. Following her bachelor and master of science studies at Istanbul Technical University, Department of Architecture, she has received her doctoral degree from University of London, University College Bartlett School of Graduate Studies with her thesis entitled The Rebuilding of Istanbul after the plan of Henry Prost from secularization to Turkish modernization. Her collaborated international research project based on the personal archives of Henry Prost at Paris was exhibited and published. She is the author of Moonlight Monastery, focusing on the identity and transformation of a former Greek island, Junda, and the restoration of a Greek monastery. Her research project on the transformation of a private house into a museum within the context of the Bosphorus has been published as the 10th year of Sabancı Museum. She is currently uh, conducting a research on an Ottoman Levantine architect, Alexander Wallery's Bosphorus mansion. Uh, with Johan Martelius, Gertrude Olsen and Ella Güngören, she co-edited transformations of public space, architecture and the visual arts in the late modern Istanbul, 1950 to 70. Dr. Akpınar is on the advisory board of the UCL Urban Laboratory, Ocean Design Research Association, as well as uh, A to Z IT Journal of Faculty of Architecture. She is on the editorial board of Journal of Urban Research and Development and the Journal of Architecture. Also, she is um, TESA Foundation board member. Currently, Dr. Akpınar is the coordinator of Sustainable Green Campus Project at Izmir Institute of Technology. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us, Ipek Hocam, tonight. Uh, it is a great pleasure, as I have mentioned, and uh, the word is yours. Uh, sevgili Hoca, my dear, my dear colleagues, uh, dear Nilay Hoca, dear Mine Ona, uh, and dear uh, young friends, thank you so much uh, for your kind invitation. It is a real pleasure to be with you under the umbrella of the Bayou family. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for your kind words as well. Uh, I would like to share my folder, but my flash is not active, so I'm unable to share my document with you. So, can uh, I? I'm, I made ask? you presenter. Uh, I'll check. No. Uh, I'll try again. Yalnızca toplantı düzenleyicileri ve sunucular paylaşabilir ama okum aktif değil. Hmm. Uh, it, is, it is in the passive mode. Hmm. Uh, cihaz ayarlarına gidiyorum. Can you look again? Ah yes. Hmm. I think it is done. Great. Did it come? Yes, uh, Hojan. Right. Uh, but it's not full screen. Yes, now. Uh, ah, I'm trying. I'll have a look. Great. But now, OK, great. Well, technology is sometimes extremely helpful, but sometimes it can be a nightmare. <laughs> so, yes, let's go. Let's shoot. So, uh, Istanbul is one of the cities which are possible to be grasped gradually. 
only if approached without fears and prejudices. Uh, I'm quoting from Umberto Eco. He visited Istanbul following the Marmara earthquake in 1999 and, uh, and made this declaration. So this picture we have discussed in, two, in November 2013 with the, with the then Deputy Prime Minister Ali Babacan. As an economist with an economist background, he underlined this silhouette, this urban silhouette uh, from Maslak. Uh, he underlined the economic, financial and urban achievement uh, of the then government. I'm not arguing against that. I mean, as an architect, as an architect, how can we? It is a it's, it is a success. It is an achievement. We can't we can't deny that. But what I am arguing is we need also to see the background, the other side of the coin, the other side of the mirror. A capitalist urbanization we've witnessed in Turkey. A capitalist urbanization very reminiscent of Tafuri's uh, depiction of Tafuri's on the one of uh, American cities in terms of the restless, wild, harmful, pitiless commodification and consumption process. It is uh, it is hand in hand with the loss of ethical values ad, as depicted by author David Harvey. To tell the story of urban development in Istanbul is unveiling its uh, many layers uh, and this representation is actually a representation of the contradictory feature. Uh, Istanbul has been depicted uh, in the last uh, in the in the 21st century, in the last 20, 25 years, it has been depicted as a global hub, as a global port, financial hub. Uh, and then the then prime minister has depicted his main duty as to market the city as well as the country. Visualized by the so-called urban reconstruction, the decade is characterized by destruction, eviction of the urban poor, restless rapidity combined with the accumulation of the capital. In, the, in this century, we witnessed will all municipal and governmental resources and even police support, Istanbul underwent a radical special as well as a social change. We have witnessed massive number of urban demolitions, starting from the Sulukle, uh, 1,000 year old neighborhood. Uh, this map uh, indicate, unveils the police force eviction from the city centers towards the northern part of the of the city. Those depictions, uh, those evictions, has uh, have been heavily. Uh, documented and written by uh, under the title of urban poor uh, city poor uh, under the title of hygienization uh, hygiene lives and uh, gentrification another uh, hot topic of discussion has been under the title of reproduction of the class reproduction production of space and reproduction of class and a large number of researchers from the urban planning departments have been focused on the on the rising emerging death toll of the child workers in the in the construction sites and uh, Professor Chalar Kedar has depicted the period uh, as caught the ones who could be part of globalization and who could not be. What is going to be the role of architects, planners, young researchers, uh, educators, citizens and administration? It is it is it is my basic questions. What is what about as a citizen, as an educator? What what about our role? So we are aware of the emerging numbers of uh, theoretical research in the in the field about urban segregation, economic segregation, about the dichotomy conflicts of the city uh, as the city of intersections. Uh, new studies, new new public publications indicate uh, those those segregations and. And conflicts. What can be the positioning in architecture and urbanism in, in this shifting periods? Can the making of space, uh, can it invite critical theoretical consideration of conditions, discourses and images? 
how can a dialogue can be set up with the stranger in this uncertain crisis atmosphere? To what extent can architect, researcher conceive and pave way for new approaches? So usually studies do not provide a unique method and they they we don't have an agreement about terms about methodologies about approaches but there is one one common interest is the making of space as a social product uh, space is understood is perceived as a social entity with particular localized meanings and uh, the research the design research is definitely multidisciplinary transdisciplinary and studies still require some form of uh, critical remapping and special representation. Uh, what I would like to underline before jumping to Istanbul, there is no one sociology but sociologies. So what I'm trying to do is looking beyond the chronological borders and I'm trying to reconsider all cultural imaginaries, uh, urban historiography successfully and simultaneously. So Following this contextual uh, general approach, I'm going to, to define our positioning in the uh, inspired from our urban and architectural design studio. Uh, I'm going to give a brief historical journey uh, via Istanbul, but my ma main focus is going to be Taksim, of course, as an unending journey. Uh, usually, I'm borrowing uh, Professor Ilhan Tekeli's uh, canonic classification of modernity about Turkey, timid modernity uh, from the 19th to 20th century, radical modernity, uh, early Republican period, modernization or technical modernity with Habermas terminology, the one in the mid 20th century, and of course uh, today, contemporary period, uh, globalization or and or post-globalization process. Instead of following uh, Professor Ilhan Tekeli's linear, uh, linear depiction, uh, inspired by Ahmet Amri Tampunar and Walter Benjamin, uh, with few colleagues, we have started to pose, to bring to the table another approach. In other, in other, is it possible to conceive uh, the problems, the issues, the conflicts, the contradictions we have witnessing, we have we have been experiencing in uh, starting from Taksim in Istanbul in the large scale? Is it possible to bring in other approach? Or Tanyeli Aslı Adman, Jean-François Pirouz, me. We have been uh, indicating Benjamin and Tampunar uh, as a source of, of uh, inspiration. Is it possible to set up a successive and simultaneous conceptualization of history? Because when we look towards history, then we, we are arguing that we can, we can be able to resolve, uh, to, to face the contradictions, the chaos, and then to, to bring solutions, alternative solutions to the table for the future, for the close future. So this is the Urban Studio. This is the production of Urban Studio uh, at ITU and at Mimar Sinan uh, Güzel Sanatlar University, directed by me and Haydar Karabey. Uh, so our young colleagues has been looking the most layered, the most multicultural, multilinguistic, multi-faith cosmopolitan in all times. And they had been, they kept asking, is it possible, you know, to cover all the history? As you know, as Benjamin has written once in the beginning of the 1940s, history has been written uh, by the ones on the power. So our young colleagues, uh, with our young colleagues, we are asking the question, is it possible to rewrite the history? Is it possible to include all, uh, all misfit ones, all dışlananlar, all outsiders uh, to our urban history, starting from Taksim? So following this conceptual uh, discussion, we have started 
you know, to look towards the history, to the, towards the history of our city with other glasses. So if we give, if we try to, to give a brief history of Istanbul, we can't deny the, the, the importance of the very first uh, plan by drone uh, prepared by Moltke, a German Austrian pla planner uh, in 1837. What he invited to the city, to the administrative authority, uh, the conceptualization, reconceptualization, reconceptualization, of a network of road based, based on the Greco-Roman period. So the human scale, horse scale, uh, has been always been the, 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 main, the main identity of the city and the rich and the poor had been living side by side. So we are we can't talk about the urban segregation uh, for Istanbul, for the imperial city. When we look towards the Pera, when we look to those uh, photos, I mean, it could be a European city, right? Uh, but we see the Fez and, you know, it is the period of timid modernity and we are witnessing an imperial city with her cosmopolitan nature, multi-faith, multilinguistic plurality. And modernizing, as part of the modernizing pluralities, we witness emergence of uh, luxurious buildings, different commercial uh, buildings like Pera Palace uh, at Pera. And uh, amongst those foreign travelers, uh, one of them was Le Corbusier. In his journey to the East, he wrote once a harmonious structure without contradiction. Well, it was a, it was an outlook. Uh, he has drawn uh, these fantastic sketches from the sea, from the middle of the sea, obviously. But I, I'm arguing that he couldn't enter the city. He couldn't enter the aura of the city. All we know that uh, it is the period of richness and poverty hand by hand. Uh, it, was a, it was the most difficult period of the empire. It was a shrinking empire, uh, full of fires, full of earthquakes. And of course, as a shrinking empire, uh, the imperial city has been, had been welcoming a large number, massive, uh, immigrations from the other parts, from the uh, losing parts of the of the states. This, this the pictures depict the Sultan Ahmed Square uh, as the, as the main coordinate, as the main location of uh, of the people who had been migrating. So I'm jumping from this this period of misery, uh, miserable condition towards the, towards the establishment of, of the young state. In the very first decade, the attention of the administration was focused on the burnt city by the enemy, as well as on the establishment of a new capital in Anatolia. However, uh, starting from the end of the 20s, the attention of the politicians has shifted back to, to the former imperial city, Istanbul. Uh, in 1933, uh, the administration, uh, the local administration has organized uh, a limited invited international competition. They invited uh, leading names uh, from the urban design, from the field of urban design, Algos, Lambert, Agash, Prost. Prost has declined the uh, invitation because of his duty. But then three have entered, uh, have sent their proposal. Uh, the administration was not satisfied. Uh, obviously, Mustafa Kemal uh, practically wanted to work with, with the French uh, designer who was at the, at the time the head architect of Paris. Proust was in Istanbul by the, by the acceptance of the then Sultan in 19, uh, 
two, between 1902 and uh, 1907, he was he came and re revisited several times Istanbul. He studied Hagia Sophia as uh, and its surroundings as its as uh, his master plan. Uh, then he became uh, the main arch, the leading, the chief architect uh, for the French colonies in North Africa, and he became the head architect of head urban designer of Paris. He knew the Muslim context. He knew he knew how to work with the Istanbulites. He knew the Istanbulite context, and of course, he is he's from Paris. So. And I have a speculative argumentation as well against the increasing power of the German planners in Ankara. I'm arguing that the local and both the local and uh, central governments, they wanted to work with a French designer. I, I'm unable to prove that, but this is just a speculative uh, argument. So uh, he was invited to Istanbul in 1936 with a large group of young French and Turkish planners, uh, architects. They, they documented, they analyzed, they made a large number of observations and they set up, uh, they, they set up a limited a plan de concentration concentration, partial planning, connecting public open spaces, very reminiscent of Moltke's plan, uh, connecting uh, public open spaces via network of roads. It was a partial plan for the historical peninsula where the very major character was was the was the uh, surroundings of Hagia Sophia, the, the, the converting them, conversion uh, of the park, uh, conversion of the surroundings into archaeological park. And of course in Beyoğlu, the, the, the main identity is to set up a Place de la République, a place, a public space of the Republic uh, for the young state. So, it was not a to total master plan. It was a series of propositions for three geographic uh, regions. And the, one of the main characteristics was the, was the conversion of all cemeteries into, into public arenas, into public gardens and into public uh, locations. When we look to the, when we check the notes of the, of the plan, a better and there, there is a call for better and hygienic life for all, a better life for women, a more comfortable life, uh, so formation of new healthier neighborhoods at the urban periphery, formation of espace libre uh, public uh, spaces, urban demolitions in old neighborhoods and their construction and rapid uh, modern transportation. This is a very generic call uh, that we have we had witness for all European cities in the very same time. So it is a new script for social re-existence. In, uh, in Turkey, in the context of Istanbul, the plan has gained new meanings. It was an urban regeneration for cultural and social transformation, transportation, hygienic and aesthetic, uh, had been the le leading team in the, in the notes of master plan. Uh, my focus is going to be the culture valley, uh, the, the Gezi promenade. Uh, so the, the, the issue is during this uh, implementation, for the implementation of a large number of gardens, uh, which make 18 in total, all the cemeteries uh, have been removed to the urban periphery as we had been witnessing in the modernizing mod in the modern cities in, in continental Europe. Uh, there is an argument that uh, the government has pleased the, the um, local ethnic groups and has uh, had demolished the, the cemeteries of non uh, non Muslims ones. So this this uh, Archival documents prove that 
old cemeteries had been removed because of the hygienic regions, Protestant, Catholic, Armenian, Greek, as well as the Muslim ones. Uh, in other confrontation, we had uh, been uh, with, the, with the local and central administration. It is about the declaration of the, of the truth or shift of the truth. Uh, the preservation concept of the 1930s uh, covers, I mean, does not decline the uh, civil demolitions of the civil architecture as well as the public ones. And the, the PROS plan uh, brings to the table the conversion of, of a series of Ottoman public buildings or Ottoman military buildings into public buildings like museum, Harbiye Military Museum or uh, universities. Uh, four barracks had been given to Istanbul Technical Universities. And only the one at the top of the hill at Taksim, uh, at the, in front of the Maksam area, the partly demolished barrack had been uh, had been demolished and it it was converted into a large public arena under the name of Place de la République. The Gezi Promenade uh, was or indicated a new social and urban script. It it was meant the the new face of the republic it has it was uh, meant a new location a new coordinate for a modern lifestyle with hygienic and aesthetic um, uh, emphasizes the the project was implemented in the in the mid 40s uh, and it was widely published during the inon period uh, via the official official publications with Inönü at the cover. The execution plan, implementation plan of 10 years from 43 and 53 was partly, was partly uh, executed due to the difficulties of the economic difficulties of the Second World War. Uh, it, it was covering a thousand hectares thousand hectare area of Istanbul and it was a modern zoning plan. I mean you can read there are a large number of researchers reading this master plan. I mean some uh, had been focusing on uh, public open space, some had been focusing on demolition or shifting the truth about the demolitions. Some has focused on Europeanization, purification, secularization. Some uh, on uh, some focus on geometric orders, trail, pool, sculptures, or even uh, aestheticization of the uh, aesthetic order. Some do focus on the fiscalization of reforms in the cultural and educational field. My focus is uh, the very last one. Uh, combined with the first one. So based on the archival uh, material from the Institute of France de Architecture, I am I'm ar I'm arguing that yes, the pros plan is very similar to the ones in Europe, but in Turkey it gains new meaning. It is a new and modern and secular life scenario. It has secularizing effects, bringing men and women in the very same place. 18 parks are not only simple gardens. They welcome kids, young people and women out of their cafes and then, you know, uh, to be to enjoy everyday life in uh, public open spaces. So those those parks have been had been welcoming via architectural competition, uh, distinguished examples uh, of their period. And large number of new neighborhoods uh, that the picture indicates Elmada Avenue, uh, Harbi Avenue uh, corner from the Divan Hotel. So colonnades, uh, new patisseries, new boutiques, and then combined with uh, new modern houses, flats, as well as the new modern offices has been one of the main motors of the, of the plan. Uh, 
The park has been indicated uh, for the protection, but the very first uh, touch came uh, by the demand, by the wish of the Americans. Conrad Hilton and his team went at the very specific, one of the most beautiful coordinate of the, of the park uh, for the location of the Hilton Hotel in Istanbul in 19, in the beginning of the 50s. So it, were, it has been one of the first Hilton Hotel outside of the United States, including uh, London. Uh, it was sort of a physical demonstration of the American culture uh, towards the Russian Soviet uh, Russia. So, that the plan was revised by a large, large group of Turkish planners, beautifying Istanbul and glorifying its Ottoman past and making the traffic flow like water had been the main motto. Uh, the local administration had kicked out Harry Prost because he was a foreigner who couldn't know the Turkish culture and the Turkish land. And let's raise the miserable old houses had been had been uh, in the headlines of the Turkish dailies and Aragüler's photograph had been used to to legitimize uh, to legitimize this wish. During the Inona period, uh, about 1,100 buildings had been demolished for the execution uh, of the archaeological park and the Taksim park, as well as the Atatürk Boulevard, starting from the uh, south of Marmara and towards the uh, Taksim Maidan. Uh, the execution of the 50s include more than 7,300 buildings, uh, large roads, implementation of roads had been had been realized, executed during this period, starting from uh, 1956 uh, until 1960, until the military uh, coup. The blue, I'm not sure whether you can perceive, the blue ones uh, was meant to be executed by during the uh, mid 1980s by during the mayorship of Bedret and Dala. So large number of uh, recent publication indicate uh, the ads uh, do what the Americans do had become a motto. Uh, it was a period of the emergence of consumption. It was a new Turkey destruction, repeat, speed, rapidity and combined with the accumulation of capital uh, was the main characteristics of the, of the decade. So we were talking about the ones who could be part of globalization and who could not be. Uh, but then in, the, in each 30 years, uh, during the 50s and 50s, during the execution of PROS plan, uh, we had witnessed large number of demolitions, uh, sometimes legally, legitimate framework uh, was prepared, but most of the time informally and illegally uh, destroying the lives of the urban poor. So Charles R. Kader has rephrased the, 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 the motto, the ones who could be part of modernization and who could not be. The question is, uh, yes, it is a creative destruction via developmentalist economy. Is it an opening life, the world, the life worlds of t citizen? Is it a, it is a, is it a, a plan, a project to modernize the city, or is it the beginning uh, of a chaotic world city? I mean, probably the answer can be both. Yes. Uh, Istanbul has witnessed large number of events, uh, the 60s and 70s had witnessed large number of architectural touch and shift in the, in the preservation of the park towards the consumption. We have witnessed the construction of large number of international hotels into the park and following the May Day uh, in 1977, the area has become 
in other emblematic uh, location for uh, for Turkey workers in particular. Few few attempts had been organized uh, for Taksim. Uh, architectural and urban design competition uh, that Vedat Dolokhain uh, won the first prize is uh, is one of the important one. It couldn't be realized. It, it was taking the, the the traffic under the square, and and became uh, we we had been witnessing new tensions, unprecedented, unknown contrast. This uh, this uh, this was a phrase that I am borrowing from Professor Murat Güvenç. When few former uh, students of mine had conducted few jokes, joke collage at Istanbul Technical University and Cem and Turgut, they published those collages from uh, from an experimental studio. They ask what what happened if the, the, the burnt buildings or demolished buildings were alive. It, one of them was the Taksim Barak, as you know. And the administration took this joke very seriously and they came with the idea of uh, the reconstruction of the military barrack that was that was demolished uh, in the 1940s. I mean, reconstruction of the past via architecture, reconstruction of the barrack, it is an aesthetization process and it does not belong to the 21st century. It is, it, is a, it is a conceptualization of the 19th century, 18th century. And it is the physicalization, it is a ideological physicalization and large group of universities, uh, NGOs, we say no. And we, especially rejected the elitist uh, rhetoric by architect Halil Onur. Anyone cannot enter where he, she wants, he was declaring. So we, a large group of people have started to ask for a better project, for a better taxim, but more importantly, for a better future, for a better common future uh, based on dialogue. So, uh, calls for alternative uh, approaches was conducted, but there was no one to listen. We asked as Istanbulites, as educators, as students, we ask just one simple thing, a new face, a new alphabet, a new language. It wasn't, it wasn't welcomed. Uh, Taksim pedestrianization process was partly executed. Uh, none of the Istanbul uh, offices have accepted the commissioning, so an Ankara office uh, could execute this betonification of Taksim. Then the Taksim mask was designed and was implemented. It is, it is almost finished. And of course, following uh, following long discussion with the artist art syndicate and the administration, uh, we witnessed the demolition of the Atatürk Cultural Center and the emergence of the new one. Well, in modernizing countries, the social and public one has limited effect on politics. In those countries, including Turkey, dealing with issues and problems is not sociological, but unfortunately political, even ideological. Well, modernization process is based on imitation at first, but then modern is related with restless rapidity and speed. And modernizers, uh, they are in a hurry, as if they are late to somewhere. When we ask uh, to then Mayor Kadir Topbaş, uh, he was he was architect for a year. We kept asking a rendezvous, an appointment from him. So we gave uh, we gave this call, this uh, the wish for uh, appointment uh, to the daily daily newspaper uh, ads as an ad. 
So then he had to accept us, 40 architects, 40 signature. Uh, we asked him. We didn't ask to to stop. We asked him one simple thing to slow down. He said that 46 uh, percent of GPD, national G GPD of Turkey, is coming from Istanbul. I can't stop. I can't slow down. Don't ask me that. So, all everything, all values had been had been had been um, conceived based on economics and financial um, values. So. It is the beginning of uh, problematic issues, uh, I'm arguing. So what we are asking and we had been keeping asking is uh, the, the, the priority must, give, must be given to the human being with the plurality and multitude as an approach. Uh, pluralist, flexible, open design can be a starting point from Gezi and for Istanbul in general. So uh, how can we set up an in, in integrated design approach uh, to make a sustainable, resilient public space? How we can discover the human Istanbul based on a, a new language? Well, the special story at Taksim, transformation, demolition, rebuilding processes, and the experiences not only shape, but also determine its true meaning. Quoted uh, from Haidar Karabey, the counselor of the international jury at Taksim last year. What we did, uh, or Serbest Mimarlar Derneği, uh, Istanbul branch, has organized uh, in fall 2013, they organized a student competition. Uh, the hidden agenda was can we can the hope grow up via those sort of competitions? So to what extent is it possible to re-give a human value to this area? Can we to what extent can we link people, cities, square and the park starting from Taksim? How can we formulate, reformulate, reshape the lack of transparency in commissioning of public buildings and spaces? And how to design new public spaces for human Istanbul? It was the basic question. Uh, those, those questions, as well as, uh, as well as schematic, diagrammatic proposals for walking Istanbul, for human Istanbul, embracing large number of new gardens uh, had been submitted to the then prime minister as well with a large group of architects. So the call was just simple dialogue, participatory, multi-actor and polyphonic uh, dialogue. So, with these mottos in hand uh, since 2011, a, a group of people, we had convinced the new young mayor uh, to run an international uh, architectural and urban design competition, starting from Taksim. Taksim is the emblematic one, but then the city was extremely tired uh, of the lack of transparency in commissioning large scale uh, projects. So starting from Taksim, what we aimed is, you know, to welcome a transparent process, a participatory process, uh, and then we, we we organized three stages of competition model, preliminary preparation, a two stage architectural project competition, urban uh, urban project competition, and then the part participation to the evaluation process. This model has been borrowed by the other juries as well in Bakırköy, in Kadıköy, and then the evaluation process uh, welcomed Istanbulite to, to, to join uh, for the decision. 
Well, it was a system of relations. It was a system setting up links and a dialogue or with the other other users, with the users as well as other groups, uh, different social groups in the in the society. It has welcomed uh, or unveiled the multi-layered culture, social memory, and it became uh, the. It made us remember Taksim as an inter interaction area. So we we have conducted surveys. We had welcomed uh, preliminary former uh, archival researchers. We set up interviews with focus group and social actors uh, from different fragments, social uh, fragments of the city. Uh, we have we made few publications and panels and the pre, uh, framework of the program has been set up uh, at the end of this participatory multiple selection system. Three, three projects were chosen, equal price. Uh, it was one of the most difficult choice, uh, very long discussion process, I must tell. Probably you were hearing uh, these those voices uh, behind the door. The competition, it is an initiative. I mean, it was just the beginning, an initial step. Uh, I, I, I can't tell it was just perfect, but it is it is just the beginning. So hopefully in the next future, uh, the mayorship uh, can be able to organize a more, you know, a more participatory one. So it is not an end, but then the process has has uh, underlined new questions. How can reconciliation can be established with different identities in this crisis, uh, in this chaotic environment? How can we use participatory design processes to achieve urban space with the new restructuring? Is it possible to set up dialogue? Uh, to what extent we can we can make uh, other steps to set up a dialogues amongst the other other social fragments of the society? With these questions uh, in mind, dialogue, polyphony, legal system and transparency can be our new keywords that can uh, trigger the construction of a new language for every stage of the production processes of urban space. So I'm finishing here. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope I hope I didn't run too fast. No, we are just on time. Orjan, thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, thank you very much for this very stimulating presentation, uh, Ipek Orjan. I think it had been very helpful in both understanding the transformation of the urban space in Istanbul, and uh, I'm sure that it triggered many questions on the construction of this new language. Uh, you mentioned. Um, 